Hi, I'm Michael from Sylvan Printery. In today's video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the photopolymer plate making process. It can be a little tricky to get them to develop nice and crisply. With a little care and patience, it's not too difficult to get an exceptionally crisp result. I managed to after all. Just a quick little bit of housekeeping. Nothing in this video is sponsored. I spent my own money on everything and these are just the products that worked for me. The entire process might look quite complicated, but once we break it down into a few easy steps, it's not too hard to manage once everything is calibrated correctly. Before you can develop the photopolymer plate, you must first make a film positive. Then the film and plate are married up and placed into the exposure unit. Once the plate has been exposed, the unexposed portion is washed out, manually dried off, and then baked. It is given a final exposure so that it can withstand the rigors of printing. The developed plate is finished off by attaching a double-sided adhesive so it can be mounted ready for printing. Before we get into the nitty gritty details and I lose you to boredom, if you could give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, it would really help me out. Get your pen and paper and get ready to take some notes. This is everything you could ever want to know about making photopolymer plates. To start with, we're gonna go over the equipment and supplies that you are going to need. For the vast majority of my printing, I use Toyobo KF95GC photopolymer plate. I get them in A3 size because they fit into my plate maker. It's an excellent quality plate, rated to hold a half point line and a single point dot. I have managed to develop much finer than that. It's not guaranteed and it requires quite a lot of tweaking. It hardens to a 67 sure hardness and it's perfect for the crush printing we make these plates endure. There is a little bit of an outlay to make your film positives at home and in most major cities you'll still find a couple of places that do old school photo processing and they'll be able to make some film positives for you. There are a bunch of screen printing products which I have managed to make work. I use Foteco Foil 7135. It's especially designed to give a high D-Max value on the sections covered with ink. D-Max is the amount of UV light it blocks and this film can hold a greater than four, which I have found is enough to develop excellent quality photopolymer plates. You're going to need to get some sort of printer to print your film positives. We use our Epson Surecolor P9070. They do sell some smaller prosumer units, the P600. They should work perfectly fine, but I haven't tested them. These fine art printers use a high quality pigment ink, which blocks a lot of the UV light. And they've also got a very high resolution, which means we can get good crisp details on our film positives. You will need a rip such as Filmmaker to manage the printer so that you can get a high ink load and even coverage across your film. It is optional, but highly recommended that you have a cat. They make the entire process much more fun and enjoyable. To make your photopolymer plates, you're gonna need some sort of plate making unit. You can get an all-in-one unit like I have here, an exposure table, an automatic scrubbing system, and a convection heater. These do cost quite a bit. It is still possible to process plates without one of these machines. You can purchase a UV exposure unit from eBay. I haven't tested the exposure units off eBay, but with some calibrating and a bit of trial and error, I'm sure you can make them work. With a soft brush, you can scrub out the plates by hand and you can bake the plates in your oven. To be able to attach the photopolymer plates to your boxcar base or other type of printing base, you are going to need to get a special type of adhesive film. I use the Depolo Flex Folo 0.1. It is designed to be used to hold offset blankets to an offset press, and it is a consistent 0.1 of a millimeter thick. The combination of the height of your base, the thickness of the film and the thickness of your photopolymer plate when they're all sandwiched together is designed so that the printing surface of the polymer plate is at type height. This is incredibly important as proper inking will only occur when the plate is at type height across its entire surface. It is important that you use a quality adhesive such as this because it will withstand the crushing pressure of the print and not deform, thereby keeping the photopolymer plate at type height. Now that we have all our equipment and supplies together, I'm going to go through the process of making a film positive from preparing the illustration on the computer to printing it out. I haven't nailed down a great workflow for separating my colors yet, but to set up an image to be converted into a printing plate, we must first color the parts that we want to be printed white and the remaining space needs to be black. I then place this into a printing frame. I have mine set up with the crop marks and margins that I like to work with. You do not need to flip or mirror the image. Trust me, it works. Don't think too hard about why, it will only give you a migraine. Before we can send the image to the printer, we must calibrate it with our RIP. This is a special piece of software that controls the printer in a special way to get the outcome we desire. I have found that Filmmaker 10, which was designed to make film for burning screen printing frames, works really well. The way we calibrate it is by printing out a color density test page. You should start with the lightest option, but I already know mine can handle the darker, so I'm going to choose that. Once it is printed out, we are looking for the number which has crisp lines with no white bleeding out from the black ink. We are trying to balance the crispness of the lines with the highest density of ink so that the UV light only cures the exposed portions of the image. 
while also leaving nice sharp edges. It may also be useful to adjust the dwell time on each pass. I set mine to 5 seconds. This gives the ink time to dry before it lays down the next line. Take your time and fiddle with these settings, as the quality of the film and every step you take affects the final product. Once it's finished printing, I like to let it dry for about five minutes before I cut it off the printer. I also like to let them dry up overnight, but after about half an hour, they are perfectly usable. After all that hassle of making a high quality film positive, we're now going to go and calibrate our plate making machine so we can start developing some plates. Most photopolymer plate makers come with fluorescent UV tubes. To get a good consistent result, they need to be warmed up for use as the amount of UV light changes as they heat up. I put my machine on a good 10 minutes before I am ready to develop a plate. Now is also the time to warm up the convection heater or turn on your oven. Also get the washout water to the correct temperature. If you're going to wash out by hand, get the water ready just before you need it so it doesn't cool down. Since the photopolymer plate reacts to the UV light, you have to be very careful about UV light pollution. That's why in our plate making room, I've covered up all the gaps that sunlight could leak in. A good cheap way of cutting down the amount of UV light you're emitting to get an LED lamp like the one I have here and bounce it off a wall. As you can see, there's not much light being emitted, but there is enough for me to work with. So I can still see what I'm doing and my polymer plates will not be exposed. The fluorescent light globes we have in the house don't seem to emit enough UV light to affect the polymer plate. Printing should really be called calibrating. To get a high quality product, every step of the process needs to be meticulously recorded and calibrated. To calibrate our UV exposure unit, we use a special tool called a Stouffer gauge. The polymer plate you are using will come with a data sheet that will tell you the Stouffer number the manufacturer recommends to get a good result. To use the gauge, place the emulsion side down. When you do this, the words and numbers will be in the correct orientation for you to read. Make sure it is firmly pressed down using a squidgy on the suction table. If your unit does not have a suction table, get it as flat as you can, maybe put a book on top of it or something. It is good to constantly calibrate your machine because throughout their life, the UV bulbs change the amount of UV they emit. So either use your current machine settings or start at around a minute 30. Once it has been exposed, give it a good washout. If you haven't calibrated your washout yet, three minutes should be plenty. Here we can see that the Stouffer value is 13. You can tell because the 13 is barely washed out and the 14 is completely washed out. If we wanted to increase the value to a 14, we would have to multiply the original exposure time by 1.4. Since we exposed it for 90 seconds, 90 times 1.4 is 126. If we wanted to go back by one step to 12, we would have to multiply the original exposure time by 0.7. Since our original exposure time was 90 seconds, we do 90 times 1.7, which is 63. We continue this process until we get the correct number. If you want to maintain an extremely high quality of print, you can put the gauge on the plate that you are making and then record what the Stouffer number is every time you make a plate. Once you have found a number that suits your printing process, record it so that in the future you can recalibrate quickly and continue to get your your nice consistent results. To use the machine for washing out, you must calibrate the washout time. I do this by making a handful of test plates. We expose them using the settings we determined with our Stouffer test. You can start by washing out for one minute. You can see the slight layer of photopolymer left on the plate. We then repeat the process, gradually increasing the time in 15 second increments until it is all washed out. We don't want to wash out more than necessary as this can affect the printing surface as the water will erode the cured surface over time. All we want is the unexposed material to wash off. Once you are happy with the result of your washout, remove any contaminated water off the plate with a spray bottle and then use an air gun to dry it off. You could also use a sponge, but it isn't quite as efficient. I've never done it because we have this machine here and it seems like a huge hassle, but it's entirely possible to wash these out by hand. Just make sure you have a really, really soft brush and the water should be lukewarm. This machine holds it at about 24 degrees. Brush in figure eight patterns. I'd make sure the brush was no less than about one third the size of the plate that you're trying to wash out and try and brush it out nice and evenly. I'm sure it will take a little bit of practice, but it shouldn't be impossible. All of the washing out makes the water contaminated with photopolymer waste. It is best to check with your local authority to work out how to dispose of it properly. The data sheet that comes with the photopolymer plate will have the details they need 
to be able to tell you how to dispose of it safely. Whatever you do, do not throw it onto the ground. It does need to be disposed of properly. Compared to all the rest of the calibrations, calibrating the drying time is easy. All you have to do is stick the washed out plate into the drying unit. You will need to set it somewhere between 60 and 80 degrees Celsius, and then check every minute until it is dry. You must make sure there is no moisture left on the plate as this will affect the final hardening process. Once the plate has been completely dried, it's time for the final hardening. It's still a little bit soft, and if we were to print on it now, especially with the crush printing which is in vogue, it would completely destroy the plate before you've even got a couple of prints out. Easy enough to do, you put it in the UV exposure unit and it doesn't need the vacuum table on, and you just expose it. I would say five minutes or two two to four times as long as your exposure time should be more than enough to harden the polymer. I don't really think you can put it in for too long as long as you're not putting it in for like half an hour. So just put it in and if it feels hard enough, it should be fine. If you did purchase the optional can, now is an excellent time to play with it as you have to wait for the processing unit to do its work. Once we are happy with the plate, we have to be able to mount it onto our base. For this, we use the special double-sided adhesive. Carefully stick the plate to the adhesive to avoid trapping any bubbles. And there we have it, a fully finished plate. Hopefully this video was helpful in explaining the entire process of making a photopolymer plate. And just like the process of making the plates, it's good to have a notebook and to take some notes as you print of any defects or slight inconsistencies that you might want to fix up. And the way to do that is just through trial and error of tweaking a setting, making a plate, printing it out, and seeing what changed. If you have any questions or need help developing a plate, please leave a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Now that we've spent all that time calibrating our machines and getting these perfect plates made, we can just throw them on the press and get perfect prints, right? If only it was that easy. It took me many, many more weeks before I could confidently pull something off the press that looked even half decent. And I just wanted to print something.